Have you ever observed streams? There's something beautifully pleasant about each one, yet no two streams are ever alike. Streams are on a pilgrimage themselves, with a starting point and an ending point. Many join with other streams to become rivers before they reach the ocean. We who follow Jesus are streams too. When we're joined together through the covenant union with our Father and through our trust in Jesus, we can become mighty rivers. The Spirit's indwelling in each of us brings this about. As fellow streams, we want to share what the empowerment and work of the Holy Spirit might mean to you. When the Spirit indwells the people with whom our Father consummates His covenant, they become the Spirit's temple. If someone asks you where God is, you can answer, in me. We keep on emphasizing the importance of repentance and keeping our part of the covenant. Why is repentance so important? Because our God is a holy God and He seals us with a Holy Spirit. When you're a temple in which the Holy Spirit dwells, He's not going to let you go on sinning without confronting you about it. Evidence that this consummation has really taken place is that you don't go on willfully sinning. Paul tells us plainly, You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Many people who've embraced counterfeit gospels claim to be Christians, but without the indwelling Holy Spirit, they don't belong to Jesus. When the Spirit is within you, there is no doubt about it. You're changed. The Sanctifying Work of the Holy Spirit The Holy Spirit not only convicts us of our sin so we'll turn from it, He also empowers us to be conformed to the character of Jesus. This continuing transformation is the sanctification part of our pilgrimage to salvation. Before we go on, let's review two important elements of our life pilgrimage. Justification and Sanctification. Justification means that you've placed your trust in and are continuing to trust in the shed blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Justification is a sovereign act of God. He accepts the substitute death of Jesus to pay the penalty you deserve for your sins. We covered this fully in our segment, Why Jesus Died. Through the sacrifice of Jesus, you're justified. It's vital that you don't lose sight of this truth. So many people, even those who embrace the true gospel, become seduced into believing that they can do good works to make up to God for their past sins. In other words, they try to pay the penalty themselves for their own sins by deeds they hope will appease our Father. But all this effort is fruitless in our Father's sight. Instead of trusting that they're justified only by the shed blood of Jesus, they try to become self-justified. This is the trap the Pharisees and others from the Judaizing stream practiced. Jesus called them hypocrites. Yes, good deeds do flow out of us because we're followers of Jesus, but never to pay the penalty of our own sins. Trying to earn forgiveness robs Jesus of his victory on the cross. Jesus promises, Yes, indeed. I tell you that whoever trusts in me will also do the works I do. Indeed, he will do greater ones because I am going to the Father. John chapter 14, verse 12. Now, sanctification is something very different. Sanctification is the lifelong purifying process of the Holy Spirit at work in you. He sets you apart for holiness to serve our Father's purposes in intimate love and obedience. And the Spirit helps you to be increasingly conformed to the character of Jesus. The combination of the Spirit's conviction that enables us to repent and His empowerment to change us to conform us to Jesus 
are the left and right steps of your sanctification. The pilgrimage for a follower of Jesus is threefold. It begins with justification, when you experience spiritual rebirth. Your pilgrimage continues as a lifelong process of sanctification, and your journey culminates in salvation when you stand before God's throne. As you continue to yield your life to the Holy Spirit, He produces in you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You need these character qualities to have intimate relationship with other people. The increasing presence of this spiritual fruit testifies that you're cooperating with the Holy Spirit. As your motives and attitudes are changed, your behavior follows suit. This pattern of changing our lives is our Father's process of His sanctifying us to conform to His Son, Jesus. This is a lifelong pilgrimage of heart change. As your heart is changed, then Christ-like behavior and actions follow. Remember, first your heart is changed, then your behavior. Sanctification is a circumcision of your heart. You're transformed from being controlled by your sin nature so you can take on the character and motivation of Jesus. God commanded the Israelites through His servant Moses, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and don't be stiff-necked any longer. But as we see throughout the Older Testament, the Israelites were unable to do this by themselves. So our Lord foretold a time when He would be the circumciser of those who trusted Him. The Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants so that you may love Him with all your heart and with all your soul and live. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6. Before we share how these words of Moses were fulfilled, remember no human being can be true to God without divine help. No one. If you are truly a follower of Jesus, his spirit in you is the circumciser of your sin nature. In union with Jesus, you were circumcised with a circumcision not done by human hands, but accomplished by stripping away the old nature's control over the body in this circumcision done by the Messiah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 11. The easiest way for you to grasp heart circumcision is that sanctification is transformation. As you live in covenant with our Father, the Spirit of Jesus is going to change you from the inside out. You were born egocentric. The world revolved around you. But through the indwelling Spirit's work, you become theocentric or God-centered. You increasingly live for your Heavenly Father to please Him and to bring praise to Him. You were born with a carnal nature that's prone to sin but you'll be transformed into a spirit-led person who yearns to please our Lord. You were born hungering to appease your lusts and desires. You'll be transformed to hunger for righteousness. You were born pursuing self-gratification. You'll be transformed to live a pilgrimage of self-denial. So many people today call themselves Christian, but show no evidence of the Holy Spirit's presence. What a triumph for Satan. People who are deceived are the hardest to convince that they're in error. 